So you gotta go right here. See, this is the background right here. Throw her down! Throw her down! Throw her down! Throw her down! <laughs> Throw her down! Throw her down! Throw her down! <laughs> Throw her down! Throw her down! <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope for the best. What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So this week's video is all about mosquitoes, killing them and keeping them away and being able to enjoy your backyard, front yard, side yard, or entire yard, or whatever part of the yard you wanna enjoy this summer. Now this video is not sponsored, and in fact the products that I'm using are ones that I was able to get at my local big box store, Home Depot. And that's the first thing I wanna say up front is, I've targeted this video on purpose to be using products that are accessible to everyone and cheap and easy, okay? I realize there's a lot of professional formulations out there that a lot of you guys would use for mosquito abatement, but I wanted to provide a video that shows what people can get at the store right now. And the first strategy is we're gonna go in and cut out as much of their habitat as we can. The second strategy is we're gonna spray and pray all over them. And the third strategy is we're gonna literally smoke them. We're gonna cut them out, spray them out, cut them out, spray them out, cut them out, spray them out, smoke them out. We're gonna cut them out, spray them out, and smoke them out every, not gonna work. Now that gives us a radius of six miles. What I want out of each and every one of you is a hard target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, or dog house in that area. Trying to, trying to get my inner Tommy Lee Jones going. We're gonna cut them out, spray them out, and smoke them out every... Throw her down! <laughs> so here is my target for today. This is my backyard space. We like to use the pool during the day, and mosquitoes aren't so bad then, but we also do like to use it at night, and that's really the main reason I'm going after this. This is pool season, and we do use the pool at night. We do have a screened porch and patio here, but even sometimes mosquitoes will get in there, so I wanna go ahead and eliminate everything out through here and that's the goal we do like a lot of plants and stuff so we have a lot of habitat here for the mosquitoes to reside in and so that's why we need a plan of attack how are we gonna protect this space so we can enjoy it a little bit better this summer and so the first part of the strategy I think is pretty obvious but it's one that you know definitely requires a lot of maintenance, especially if you have areca palms like I do, they drop these fronds which can sit like a little canoe and hold water. And that of course makes habitat for mosquitoes to breed in. So the first thing to do is to clean up, just keep things cleaned up. And the second thing to do then is, if you have areas that are thick, overgrown, especially like I do with these areca palms, you might wanna consider a pruning. So getting these all thinned out like this, as you can see, just creates a lot more airflow under here, which is gonna help any water to dry out. I mean, it's gonna be wet anyway. This is the tropics, it's gonna be humid, and there's water gonna sit in these because of the clump form that they're in. 
but the more you can thin out, the less water can stick in there. Also, when we get later on to the smoking section, you'll see that the smoking will work a lot better when they're thinned out as well. Now, I know not all of you have palms. Some of you might have other shrubs or whatever, and that's fine. It's the same kind of thing. If there's a way to prune something up off the ground, if there's a way to thin it out, if there's a way to get more airflow, that's the key. Anything we can get in our landscapes and around our landscapes to increase more airflow so the water will dry up and have less habitat for mosquitoes to breed in, the better. Now, a close cousin to pruning would be mowing the lawn. The shorter you can mow the lawn, again, the less water it's gonna retain, and that means the less habitat for mosquitoes to breed. And I'm telling you, especially here in Florida where we have really thick, dense St. Augustine grass, it can hold a lot of water. I mean, that's a good thing to an extent, but when it comes to mosquitoes, it's not. So cut as low as you can. Now, I'm not telling you to break any nasty rules here. I'm not telling you to take your St. Augustine down to two inches. Please don't do that. Don't take your turf type tall fescue down. Don't do that. But if you're somebody that can mow a little bit lower, if you're somebody that mows a little bit more often, you don't have to break the one third rule and you can stand to get it just a little bit lower especially maybe leading up to a party for example go ahead and go low for a couple of weeks right about the time you know you're about to enjoy that lawn and a lot of people will be on it go ahead and get her a little bit lower the week or two leading up to that that's a good idea now me i'm cutting my pro vista st augustine grass in the backyard at three and a half inches which is just about the recommended height Okay, so it's getting hot now and I am essentially done with all my trimming and mowing. So I've done what I can to disrupt their habitat. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna spray them away and I'm gonna spray and pray. And I'm gonna use two products that I easily found at a big box store. And that's the reason that I'm using these products here. I realize there's probably some other things you can get online like Bifin, things like that. You can mix in a pump sprayer that will do a better job. But the idea here is to show folks what you can get at the store right now that is available to you and cheap and very easy to use. And these are the two products I came up with. I got this Cutter Backyard Control over by here. This was $10 and it covers just over 5,000 square feet. And then I got this Triazicide over by here. This one was uh, six or $7 and uh, same thing, just over 5,000 square feet. Okay, don't panic y'all. We're not gonna read the label too much here. Just gonna be quick one. So the area I'm treating is section five. That is a 2,000 square foot area. Remember, I'll go ahead and just use this one. They're essentially the same product on the label is just about the same so both of these products cover 5100 square feet so I have 2000 2100 or so so I'm gonna use just about half of this on the lawn maybe a little less I did read the directions here and on the label it doesn't tell you how fast it should come out but there is a sight glass on the side so I'll just have to pay attention to that and when it gets close to half I better be done with my grass now a couple important things to look at we're just gonna look at some high hard ones here and the first thing is we're going after surface insects you can use these products to go after thatch infesting or soil bound insects like grubs and things like that but we are going after mosquitoes so you want to make sure that your target is on there and you can see it is and for mosquitoes that's how I know that one quart of this product to treat 5,120 square feet of lawn so again that's how I know I need just about half of this for my area which is 2,100 square feet and just so you know these treatments for these products they're really limited to blanket spraying of lawns and landscape beds and the trees and shrubs that are in those landscape beds and we're not even going to spray up today we're only going to hit the trees and shrubs a little bit and you'll see that but that's what we're doing we're blanket spraying around the foundation we're hitting the tree and shrub beds and the lawn that's what these products are for now one of the thing though speaking of trees and shrubs because I do have palms that I'm going to spray the base of them and you're going to see that I did find some mealy bugs in those when I was pruning yesterday out these mealy bugs here and later on a little bit of scale that's on my sago palms is because it's another good reason to read the label a lot of times when you're going after one target in this case mosquitoes if you read the label you'll find out that there are other targets that you'll also be able to get with that product and that's why reading the label is so important sometimes there's some side benefit to your applications and if you know about that you can target them a little better in the case where I found these mealy bugs on my areca palms I'm gonna go ahead and give them a little bit heavier handed squirt 
just knowing those guys are in there causing me a little bit of damage. You'll also see the same thing with the Sago Palms, and I'll be giving those a little heavy squirt to kill the scale that's invading them, as well as the mosquitoes that reside beneath. So this is a Sago Palm, and this is how I know that scale's getting it. Now I sprayed this with the horticultural oil not long ago, so a lot of these are probably dead, but again, this treatment we're gonna do today, because it's foundational and we're gonna be hitting all up and down through here where the mosquitoes can be hiding, we're also gonna hit these guys and this will just help to kill some of them too. I'm not gonna put these under a microscope though. We'll do that another time. And the other thing I did is I found some scale, and I have scale all the time that gets on my sago palms that are around my foundation. So the fact that I'll be using this product, it doesn't hurt. It's a good thing. Now, again, it's not the main reason you go after scale, and these, some of these scales have to be actually in the crawler stage in order for it to work. But definitely the mealy bugs this will control, and it will definitely help me with my scale problem. Just in case you're wondering, I can do some more videos on controlling scale in palms. This is what I'm using here. This is actually just mineral oil. You can also use neem oil, but I prefer a horticultural oil to control scale in palms but again since these have it on the label it's always going to help and one last thing you do want to look at it says thoroughly wet down the grass a few hours before applying so i went ahead and did that already and now i'm ready to go out and spray and pray let's go hook it up and hope for the best audio will be okay on this it comes out very slow I just did this whole section right here and only got rid of four ounces so that's good and that's why they tell you to spray the lawn until it's wet so for sure this one doesn't come out as fast as the fungicide that we used previously which came out really fast I'm gonna turn the water up a little bit too I don't have the water on full blast so we'll see if that speeds it up at all but so far only four ounces and I did everything inside the fence here Okay, so I took my time and it's coming out a little bit faster, but now it's down to looks like 20, 22 ounces left. It's 32, so I've used 10 ounces so far. And that's good, because I gotta do outside the fence now. So yeah, we're working pretty good here. Got another four or five ounces to go, just in that little part out there. So there you go, it does come out pretty slow. <music> weeds to pull in there but either way so now that this is all pruned out I'm gonna go ahead and spray it right up and about to there because that's all area where mosquito habitat can be and I'm gonna hit them from this side and then I'm gonna go on the outside of the fence and I'm gonna drench all of these beds as well and hit these trees about three or four feet up and just get this whole bed cleaned up right here and you can see here it's exactly where I want to be so the lawn is treated and I got 20 ounces left that's pretty good also I will say I really like this trigger makes it easy to get on and off that's really handy. And by the way, you can smell this stuff. It's got kind of a sweet smell to it. So you can definitely tell when it's coming out because you can smell it. it. Smells like an insecticide, but more on the sweeter side of an insecticide, if that's a thing.
I know I have weeds in here, but with that second little more than a half a bottle, I was able to do all those shrubs there, those over there on the edge, all the beds in through there, and down in through here. Again, yeah, I know, tons of weeds, crazy. Need to prune that, but was able to spray all up under here, and then around to here. So that's probably representing a good 2,000 square foot of beds right there. That's what it covered. So it's kind of the same thing. It's okay to eyeball. It's okay to eyeball your beds a little bit. There you go. See, and I was able to get all these guys soaked down because they all have problems with scale. And they also harbor mosquitoes underneath them too. Now, real quick, I know some of you will ask me about this product. This is the bear product that I've been recommending for a long time. This is a great product and this will also kill mosquitoes in the lawn. You can also spray your landscape beds with it. However, it's not really labeled for trees and shrubs, at least not as extensively as these other products with the uh, different active ingredients. So it's just not one that I'm comfortable spraying on my trees and shrubs unless I can see them listed. And for example, the other product definitely lists that palms are okay and things like that whereas this really doesn't also this is more expensive so i just don't think this is the best thing if your primary target is mosquitoes now if you're targeting a lot of other bugs and you want to kill on contact and residual then this is definitely a better product but with today's treatments we're just going for mosquitoes that's the main thing and i'm getting the scale as a backside and so that's why i'm choosing to use this product here but again you could use either one but since this one has got the trees and shrubs labeled on it specifically i just feel better about using it all right i'm gonna go ahead and spray the rest of my beds here and everything with this one just to make sure that it sprays exactly the same but I'm pretty sure it will because it looks almost exactly the same as far as packaging and everything and I wouldn't even be surprised if these are made in the same plant by the same people just different labels Throw her down let's hope for the best couple things I want to go ahead and do to put a bow on this section of the video. It is getting pretty long here. First of all, just to reiterate, both of these products are essentially the same thing, almost the same active ingredient. One is just a derivative or you might say a more de refined version of the other, but they do the same thing and the labels are nearly the same as well. I just tried the other product just to make sure it all flowed the same and it certainly did. Now, as far as the area I treated, I treated the entire back lawn. And then I also treated all of the landscape beds in the back and all the way around the entire house so I can get a nice perimeter spray. And then I went ahead and sprayed over the top of all the low slung palms and shrubs. I didn't treat the rest of the lawn because we don't typically sit in the front lawn so I'm not really worried about mosquitoes out there. This one definitely comes out soapier. You can see it. See the white on there? The other one I couldn't see quite as well. So that might be a slight difference just in the formulation of these two. You know, but seeing that white foam up there, it lets you know it's coming out in addition to the smell. And you can see this one comes out equally as slow, so that's good though. When you see that white foam, you know you're getting some product out, so that's nice. Now as far as the back around the pool, I do spray inside of the larger pots because I want to get some coverage in there. And I do all of the edges around the house and the porches, but I don't spray areas where we typically are going to be barefoot like around the pool deck and all that. I just do the edges. I also spray inside the channel drain because it just drains to the lawn. It doesn't go to a sewer. Okay, now this final part of the strategy is fogging, and you're gonna wanna fog your area about an hour or so before you use it. And I've been getting at least four, even five hours of good mosquito control even before I sprayed the lawn and everything like you saw me do earlier in the video. Now, there only seems to be two or three manufacturers of these propane-powered mosquito foggers, and I'll link in the description below to the one I have. They seem quite expensive. I paid $83 for mine, which again, seems a lot for what it is, but it also seems like not many people are interested in making this type of a product. This one works okay for what it is. I just wouldn't drop it or anything like that. I'll also link to the fogging liquid that I got. Again, that seems like there's only a couple of people that make that and they're all the same. 
I also do fog my screen porch, but it is well ventilated. So I'm assuming you could probably fog if you have a pool canopy or something like that. But if you have something with hard sides on it that's not fully ventilated, like this lanai that I have here, I wouldn't recommend that you do that. You can also fog the lawn. Of course, that's a little bit harder. And again, you wanna do this on a day that is not so windy. Now, I just wanna say, I full well realize that some of you will be turned off by this part of the strategy. And look, I totally understand it. This fogging thing is kinda of new to me. And it is a little bit strange and weird, but also a little bit fun at the same time. But it's not something that I'm doing every single night, every single weekend. It's only for special occasions when I know that we're going to be out and enjoying the pool longer into the evening. That's when I'll add the extra step of doing the fogging about an hour before we get started. Also, I did want to stop and say thank you to all of you who reached out to let me know that last week's podcast was uploaded in an unedited fashion. I'm really sorry about that. The YouTube version was the edited fashion, but I ended up going to see my parents in North Carolina and... Uh, anytime, boss. Take the safety off. Anytime, it would help, boss. It would help if I took the safety off. Come in closer. Stop power aid. Stop right there. I got in a hurry and actually forgot to upload it. And then when I got to North Carolina, I th I had what I thought was an edited copy with me and I uploaded that, but it actually ended up being the unedited version. So I think that's been corrected around all the different platforms now, but I'm sorry for those of you that had to hear it. It seems like a bunch of you actually enjoyed hearing me talk to myself and edit myself in real time. So hopefully you got something out of that. But either way, that is up now. That was the Memorial Day special podcast. A lot of good information on there. A lot of good information in there that's still relevant to you today, especially if you're struggling with nuts edge. So definitely go check that out. Link in the description below to last week's podcast. Now, another thing that a lot of you guys noticed is this week there was no podcast. And I'm really sorry about that. I actually ended up just needing a little bit of a break from it. I've been doing a lot of content here all spring, just hammering through and so I needed to take a break and actually spend time with some really good friends yeah you got a big one Real nice. ready one two three let's do one more one two three it's a good one real good <laughs> that's a, that's a, look at that bad boy yeah huh look at, look at that Heard it, fish, baby. Heard it. Al's very selective when he fishes. Yes. So, <laughs> see, I just wait for the captain to tell me when he's gonna catch the biggest one, <laughs> and I reel it in. Look at that. Look at that fish right there. Yeah. That dark one. See, that's how you work it. Don't wanna go, no need to stay, but I really need to